Inventor of the telephone, the metal detector, and contributor of priceless knowledge to the field of acoustics, Alexander Graham Bell was also quite interested in the future of flight. However, he didn't think that the future of flight would come through the airplane. Rather, he thought the future of flight would be focused on tetrahedral kites. During research, Bell had become obsessed with the idea of creating a kite large enough to carry a man. He actually created the box kite design in his quest to create the ultimate kite. This particular design joined several triangular kites together with a frame to create a box. Doing so increased the kite's surface area with little increase in weight a good measure to improve flight capacity. Upon this innovation, Bell joined several box-like kites together to create larger pyramidal kites that are known as tetrahedral kites. It's one of nature's most stable structures, so why wouldn't it lead to the future of human flight? Right? While Bell's prediction for the future of flight might have been a little misguided looking back, at the time when aeronautical innovation didn't have set bounds, he was on the cutting edge. Although his kites were quite large, they were easy to fly, meaning improved stability. It's this stability that was at the core of why Bell believed kites to be the future. He had seen the Wright brothers' plane and its instability as a massive issue that would falter the design path or so he thought. In 1907, Bell established the Aerial Experimental Association, AEA, which was focused on creating a practical-powered plane. That same year, they went on to build the largest tetrahedral kite ever built. This massive construction was named Signet, meaning little swan in French, and it was made up of nearly 3,400 individual cells. It stood at 40 feet long and weighed in at 200 pounds. That weight number becomes impressive when you consider that the Wright's first craft to carry a human was 604 pounds. The tetrahedral kite carried a human 168 feet above water while being towed behind a ship. After this illustrious flight, it crashed and and ripped into pieces. The man who was aboard, Thomas Ethelin Selfridge, actually survived the flight but later became the first person to die in an airplane crash aboard the Wright military flyer in 1908. Bell's colleagues at the AEA eventually moved on into researching more conventional craft and designed several series of airplanes. The AEA made a plane called the Junebug, which sustained a 5,360-foot flight in under two minutes under the control of pilot Glenn Curtis. By the end of 1908, the AEA flew over 150 flights without issue. This organization, founded on aeronautic research, was completely funded by Bell's wife. Eventually, the funds ran out and the association had to disband. Before that happened, however, Bell did make innovations in the realm of airplanes. One of his most famous is that of the aileron, which is now standard in all aircraft. Drawing back to Bell's obsession with tetrahedral kites, after Signet crashed, he created two more with the creative names of Signet 2 and Signet 3. The third model was coupled with a 70 horsepower motor, but only flew one foot. The Signet series proved to be a failure of engineering. Alexander Graham Bell abandoned his tetrahedral kite experiments finally in 1912. While it may seem absurd that one of the world's greatest minds thought such a seemingly crazy idea was the future, that's all part of the engineering and design process. Failure is crucial to determining what path leads to success.